you said there's been conversations with a number of clubs. Have you had a chat with Mikel Arteta, even about perhaps training with Arsenal and keeping yourself sort of game sharp there? No, um, I had a chat with with Steve Bowl. I mean, it was just as I left West Ham um, and asked him if I could come and, and train with the 23s. But with the with the COVID situation, it it just wasn't it wasn't uh, possible at that time. Um, but that was a long time ago. Yeah, I mean, because obviously, I mean, you mentioned you're a West Ham fan, but a big part of your heart must still be with Arsenal as well. Yeah, of course. I said it before a number of times. You know, I spent 17 years of my life, which is you know much higher than half of my life. And you know, when you spend time growing up, you know, from the age of nine in the academy, and then fulfilling your dream of playing for the first team, of course, you're gonna you're gonna learn to love the club and you know that will always be the same I'm, I'm an Arsenal man and you know I always see myself as an Arsenal man but at the same time you know they've moved on they've, they've got a good manager now in place who I feel is, is going to be the right guy to to get them back to a position where they're at least challenging getting back into the top four it's going to take some time but I feel like he's the right man to do it You say they've moved on but do you sort of still have that dream that fairy tale that you could pull on an Arsenal jersey again? I mean, as I said before, I'm I'm an Arsenal man. So, I mean, if the opportunity came, then of course I would I would love to, and I'll jump at the chance. But at the same time, I'm I'm realistic to know that, as I said before, the chances of a of the top top team in England coming in for me are, are pretty slim. But at the same time, you never know. Yeah, and just uh, to sort of follow up with you talking about Mikel Errol, because obviously you would have played alongside him. Did you see in him then? the sort of leadership qualities and, and the, the technical, tactical noise that he's now showing he has? Yeah, definitely. I think the, the one thing that stood out with Mikel was his, was his discipline and what he demanded from others. And when he first came, he wasn't the captain, but he was a leader. You could tell that from, from day one when he walked in the door. He did everything right around the training ground. He prepared right. Um, he got himself ready for games in the right way. And, and I think you can see that now with his discipline, the way he demand what he demands of his players. Um, I think slowly but surely that will start to show through as well. What's the little piece of the jigsaw that's missing for them at the moment? Because they're not quite clicking just yet. Mm, I think it's gonna it's gonna take time um, for the players to to fully understand what what he wants. I think you can see signs of it at the moment. But I mean, what's, what's the missing part of the jigsaw? It's difficult to to put your finger on it. Um, I would love to see Ozil playing playing that team with with Arteta, but obviously that's not happening at the moment. Um, I think he'd be he'd be a big player in that team. Be it when he he could get on the ball and feed the likes of Aubameyang and Lacazette, um, but that's not happening at the minute. So I'm I'm not really sure what the answer to that question is. What has happened there? Do you, have you chatted to Mesut about it at all? No. I haven't. Um, I'm not sure, to be honest. All I can do is comment on him as a player because I played with him, and you know I love playing with him. He was he was top top player, um, and it's a shame. But what's happening is happening, and no one knows. But I'm sure that we'll find everyone will find out one day. You see football go through these sort of phases, and I wonder whether you think are we in a phase at the moment where the role of the creative midfielder like you are, or like Mesut is, or you see it with Deli Ali at Spurs as well. The role of the creative midfielder isn't really wanted as much these days. We're playing a different style of football and maybe in a few more in a few years' time that role will come back again. But do you think we're in a little phase where creative midfielders are being pushed to the fringes at the moment? Um, I think, I don't think they're being pushed to the fringes, but I think the role has changed uh, in modern day football. I think that position demands a little bit something a little bit different than than what it did uh, even four or five years ago um, you know I think a lot of managers would would look at what someone does off the ball rather than what he brings on the ball and uh, I mean it is what it is and that's the way football's gone I'm sure I'm sure it will come back to you know, people demanding in that position becoming the 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 role that it was 
back in the day. And you know, you see the likes of the top top players who who played in that position over the years. Um, a little bit fading out of the game, but I'm, I think he'll come back. Yeah. Um, you've spoken obviously about the fact that you're a West Ham fan as a boy. You're an Arsenal man as well. I have to ask you then, what are you making of Spurs being top of the league? And is it starting to worry you? <laughs> it is slightly worrying. Um, <laughs> no, but to be honest with you, and it kills me to admit, I, I actually really enjoy watching watching them play. I think Mourinho is a, a top top manager. You know, people have questioned him in the past, but for me, he's, he's one of the best and he always has been and he's starting to show that um, with Spurs. It's, it's, it's a strange season because obviously there's no fans, so anything can really happen. And a coach like Mourinho, who always sets his team up well defensively, um, and with the players they've got on the break, the pace, you know, with Lucas, Bale, Son, and then obviously the finishing capabilities of, of Harry Kane, they're going to be there or thereabouts um, when May comes. Hopefully second. <laughs> it's a funny one, isn't it? Because when he joined Spurs a year ago, people were sort of questioning whether he was yesterday's man and football had passed him by and everyone gushes over the style of football that Pep Guardiola plays. And then you look at the match of the weekend and Mourinho completely did a job on Guardiola. Yeah, I think the thing with Mourinho is, and I've never worked with him, this is just looking in from the outside. When he comes into a club, he obviously demands a lot. And watching the the documentary as well, he can be he can be quite to the point with his with his players, and you know sometimes, especially in today's world, a lot of players have egos, and you know if it, if a, if a manager is shouting and screaming, sometimes you can you can think uh, you can question it, but then over time you realise that he's doing it for a reason. He's been successful, and I think you're starting to see that now. You know the players are really getting on board with him. And they're starting to understand that his style of play and his style of play wins football games. And if you win football games, you're going to win trophies. And I think Tottenham are obviously desperate for a trophy and he could be the man to bring it. You mentioned that documentary and there was a scene in it where Mourinho sat down with Harry Kane and Harry Kane said how he wanted to be spoken of in the same breath as Messi and Ronaldo. Is he now getting towards that level? Well, I think... Messi and Ronaldo are on a different planet to everyone, yeah. you know, and you can't, I don't think you can really compare anyone to them until they've done it for, you know, 10, 12 years like Ronaldo and Messi have. And I think Harry Kane definitely has the, the potential and the ability to, to get there. Um, you can see with the way he scores goals and, you know, he's got a real chance of breaking the record in the Premier League. And if he does that and, and he, he he performs well with England as well, maybe win some, and then you can start talking about him being in that at that level. Speaking of the greats, this seems like the perfect time to ask you about Maradona. And obviously you're too young to remember him at his peak, but I'm sure you've watched stuff on YouTube and you've maybe watched the Maradona film. You know, it was a sad day for football yesterday. Yeah, devastating day. Um, I was actually lucky enough to meet him back in uh, 2005 when I was with Arsenal. I think I was under... Under 13, we went to a tournament in um, in Qatar. And he was there with Pele, and you know, players and Messi Ronaldo will be the same. But there's been great players over the years who who kids want to be like. Like when I was growing up, I wanted to be Beckham or Gerard. But as well, we always knew who Maradona was, and obviously you know, we were we were way too young to to have seen him play. But for someone to inspire like a whole footballing world and generation after generation. You know, he was a genius and I've obviously seen him on YouTube and the things he did, especially that goal against England. And yeah, special player on a sad day. Yeah, I mean, people sort of, all the obituaries today talking about he was, a, he was a flawed genius and everything. But when you consider what he did in one World Cup, that 1986 World Cup, where he was just unplayable, some of the clips are incredible to watch. Yeah, and, and I mean, unfortunately, I was... I wasn't alive in in '86, but I've seen the clips, I've seen the goals, and I've seen even the warm-ups, the things he used to do with the ball and the way he controlled the ball. You know, not many players, well, probably one who, who who got near him, Messi, in terms of his natural ability and his his, his dribbling ability. But yeah, special player. Uh, let's just finish by talking about you again, and I'm going to ask a question straight to the point. Do you think you can play for England again? Um, you know what? I'm not. 
and someone asked me that the other day and I'm not even thinking about that because my main focus is finding a team and a club that's right for me and, and just get back to playing football and get a smile on my face and you know if I can do that and 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 hopefully you know find find a good level get in form score some goals create some goals then you know I feel England should be picked on on form and I think I think the manager does with England he picks on form so you never know but the same time, I'm not. I'm not concentrating on that. Because I think the closest player to a Jack Wilshire at the moment is probably Jack Grealish. Do you look at him and think, "Oh, I can see, you know, some of my abilities in him," or oh, he's not as good as I was, or you know, do you, do you look at Jack Grealish and what do you make of him as a player? Yeah, I love him. I love watching him play, and the other one is, yeah, no, nah, him and uh, him and Foden are the the ones I really like. Like to watch um, you know Grealish obviously different players because Grealish is playing at a, a smaller club and everything goes through him he's the man they look to and I think for uh, a guy at, at such a young well he's not young but he's not old you know he's still he's still relatively young to take the armband and, and keep them in, I mean the last game of the season when we played them uh, Aston Villa West Ham Villa Aston Villa you know it's, it's very rare you see a team, whenever someone gets the ball, they look for, for Grealish to make something happen. And that comes with a lot of pressure and a lot of players couldn't handle that pressure. So, he, I mean, that game, he was brilliant. He scored a goal that kept him up and he is like Aston Villa and he's missed Aston Villa. And that's just credit to, to his character. And then the other one is Foden, who obviously plays in a completely different team, but he looks like he's been, he's been playing in that team for years. You know, he looks like... He reminds me a bit of David Silva, you know, he's, he's the perfect one to replace him. Him there, his natural ability is is frightening. And you know, even speaking with with Declan Rice, who obviously trained with him at England and been around him, he said he's he's top 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 player. And you know, I think if if they can, if England can get him, Foden and Grealish playing together in the same team, playing well, they have a real chance. But do you look at those two and think, well, I can get back to that level again and I could maybe force my way into Gareth Southgate's thinking? Um, I mean, I don't look at them because I've, I've been that age and I broke into to an England team with the likes of Rio, JT, Gerard, Lampard, Rooney. Mm. And, you know, I, I had my time at doing what they're doing. And so I'm, I'm not looking at them thinking, oh, I want to get back to that level. I'm looking at them, watching them and enjoying them play and, and thinking good luck to them. You know, I've been there, I've been to major tournaments in my country at a young age and, you know, hopefully they can they can do better than we did as a team and, and win something. 